All right, Shalom. This is the brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Akwath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. This is the definition of aristocracy from Etamon Online, and it's from the 1560s, and it says, government by those who are the best citizens, all right, from French aristocracy, from late Latin aristocratia, from Greek aristocratia, government or rule of the best and aristocracy, from aristos best of its kind noblest bravest most virtuous abstract noun from kratos rule or power all right and i want to go into a lesson through the spirit all right on the aristocracy of israel all right or the aristocracy of yasha allah as it is properly pronounced in the paleo hebrew all right beginning with yahweh shai hamashiach who is the only begotten and the firstborn of creation. The Lord is establishing the aristocracy of Israel in these last days. All right. And it puts a different meaning on Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 6. And it reads Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. Now, if we go to the blue letter and we grab the word for rich in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 6, we get the Hebrew word asir or ashar. All right. And it says rich, wealthy, the rich, the wealthy rich man rich rather literal or figurative noble rich man all right rich genius hebrew child lexicon says rich and frequently in a good sense honorable noble and that is what's being raised up in these last days the the aristocracy if you will of Israel of the nation of Yasha Allah. All right. Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. All right. Now I want to go to first Corinthians. All right. I'm going to go to uh, chapter 15 because what's happening right now is the Lord is raising up his nation, but it begins with the chief cornerstone, which is Yahweh Shah Mashiach and then the first fruits and then the, the one third. All right. Which is a part of that first fruit. But you have the hundred and forty four thousand governing body and then the uh, numerable multitude, which is one third of Israel. That would make up the aristocracy. Of Israel. All right. Beginning with Hamashiach and one hundred and forty four thousand, which is that governing body. That is what's being raised up in these last days. All right. And that's what the world can't can't uh, understand uh, because these are spiritual things. This is a spiritual understanding. All right. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I'm going to jump down to verse 22, and it reads, I'll start at 20, but now is Hamashiach risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead, and it's, it's, it's spiritual. The literal best citizen of the universe is Yahweh Shai. And then the first fruits under that. And then the order is going to trickle down until eventually two thirds are brought back after death by pain through reincarnation for the entire seed of Israel to receive that inheritance. But it's going to start off with the best citizen in the universe, which is Yahweh Shai. And the other aristocrats, the lower aristocrats under Hamashiach. Continuing on, verse uh, 22, 
For as in Adam all die, even so in Hamashiach shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Hamashiach, the first fruits, Hamashiach, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Hamashiachs at his coming. All right. And through the spirit, the Lord is raising up the first fruits to do what? To be rich in honor and nobility, first and foremost. Now, let's get that word nobility. All right. So we're going to get nobility from the etymon. All right. And you have to understand that's what the Lord is raising you up for. You're being prepared for nobility. But the Lord wants to see how you maintain integrity by being rich in a low place. And it's a very um, needful journey for those who are going to uh, be able to be a part of that first resurrection. Ottawa and Ratazah were a part of that number. Hamashiach was the first of the first fruits. And he had to suffer before he was able to receive that prize. And he still hasn't received that prize in full. He's received it in the heavens. But we're coming into the time where it's going to be acknowledged on earth as it is in heaven. And Hamashiach's first fruits, the ones that fall under him in that aristocracy are being raised up now. Everything that we're going through is a rehearsal of, of judgment and discernment. First learning how to rule our own spirits and then. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. We'll be ruler over many things under Hamashiach. All right, so let me get this word nobility, all right? And nobility says, nobilite, honor, renown, majesty, grandeur, quality of being excellent or rare, high rank, dignity, grace, great deed. It says celebrity, fame, high birth, excellence, superiority, the nobles, well-known, prominent. Now, that reminds me of a few things. All right. I'm going to start off with uh, rare. Right. So let's go to Isaiah 13 and 12. And it reads, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Now let's get that word precious. All right. So this is Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 12. And that word for precious in the Hebrew, all right, is yakar. Yakar. All right. And it says to esteem be prized, be valuable, be precious, be costly, be appraised. And it reminds me when the Lord said we shall be refined and tried as gold is tried in a furnace. But that that end result, that end product, after all of those impurities have been refined and burned out of you, that finished product is going to be something very precious and rare which by definition would make it noble or, or part of that nobility. And that's what's being raised up. You know, we said this on the highways and hedges. Really, this is through Yahweh Bashim Shai. The only people who really understand what's going on are the elites on the left hand side of Esau and the elites on the right hand side of Jacob. The aristocracy of Esau and the aristocracy of Jacob. Our weapon or our um, our confidence is in the spirit and faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Whereas on the left hand side, all right, the aristocracy of Esau trusts in the blessing that was given to them in Genesis, the 27th chapter, living by the sword, whether that's the physical sword or the sword of deception. All right. But the nobility of Jacob are sitting in low place right now. The world believes that the nobility of Jacob is P. Diddy, Jay-Z, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, Deion Sanders. All right. And they equate our nobility to these entertainers. But in actuality, through the spirit and poverty, how about Shai, the Lord's nobility or the, the aristocrats of Yahweh Bashimiah Shai's people, which is Yashar Allah, are sitting in low place, heralding the coming of the aristocrat. All right. 
Now, continuing on with the uh, word precious in Isaiah 13 and verse 12. All right. It, it, the word yakar for precious. All right. It says to be precious, highly valued, be esteemed, be costly, to be appraised, to make something precious. Strong's definition says. Properly, apparently to be heavy, an example, valuable, causatively to make rare figuratively figuratively to inhibit be make precious be prized be set by withdraw all right in the child uh gene uh Jacinius hebrew child lexicon says to be heavy all right so that's very uh spiritual when you go into nobility and it says again a celebrity no let me start up quality of being excellent or rare and that's what the Lord is pulling out of the nation of Israel as a whole. He's pulling out that that remnant that's going to be tried with fire and made and refined. All right. And Malachi talks about the Lord picking up his jewels. All right. Let me grab that really quick. This is Malachi three and verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. And Yahweh by Shemashai hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith Yehobah Shemel Shai, the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Right now we are in, uh, in a position of servants as we learn what dominion and rulership and honor and nobility looks like in the spiritual sense not in the outward appearance but in the inner appearance what proper judgment and discernment looks like in play in action as we rehearse the righteous acts continuing on verse 18 then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth Yahweh Shai and him that serveth him not all right. And you have the aristocrats of the wicked and the aristocrats of the righteous. All right. The vessel of honor and a vessel of dishonor. And there's a, a hierarchy in nations. And the aristocrats or the nobility of the nation of Israel is being raised up in the spirit first. Through the spirit and poverty, how by Shemel Shai. Again, going back into first Corinthians, the 15th chapter, it said uh, Hamashiach, the first fruits. Every man in his own order, because we all have a role to play in this movie. Lord willing, we're a part of that nobility. We're a part of that mercy and that first resurrection through the spirit and power. How about Shemel Shai? All right. Now, let me go to. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter six. All right. This is wisdom of Solomon, chapter six and verse 20. And it reads, therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. And that's why it says we have this treasure in earth and vessels, this knowledge, wisdom and understanding, and most importantly, the faith in Yahweh Shemel Shai. And we're learning through these experiences that we go through on what nobility is actually uh, what nobility and, and proper rulership actually is. By understanding the wisdom that the Lord has given us and looking at the world and seeing how how it's broken because of the lack of wisdom. And through the spirit and poverty, how by Shemel Shah, we're being raised up. Lord willing, we're a part of that number to be a part of nobility. All right. The Lord said he was he would make us what a nation of kings and priests. All right. Let's go to that. This is Exodus 19 and 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. All right. The Lord is raising us up to be a royal people. All right. A special people above only. All right. Deuteronomy 28 and 13 reads. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy power, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And right now we're rehearsing those righteous acts. 
All right. So at Hamashiach's return, Lord willing, we're part of that number. We'll be able to take part in that 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 transition of power, having a, a spot of, of dominion and being a part of that that dominion under Hamashiach. All right. Matter of fact, since I'm in Deuteronomy, let's go to chapter 15 and verse six. And it reads for the Lord, thy power blesseth thee as he promised thee and thou shalt lend unto many nations but thou shalt not borrow and thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. All right. Because truly the entire nation of Israel is nobility as a nation of people. But inside of the nation of Israel, there's a, a hierarchy. All right. And that's why when you go to Daniel's, the 12th chapter, it says this. All right. Daniel's 12. And I'll start at uh, verse one. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book, all right, which is the elect. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And that shows you there's going to be a difference. All right. As a matter of fact, let's go to Zechariah, the 12th chapter. We're going to go to the eighth verse. All right. And it reads, In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. All right. And through the spirit that shows you the house of David is that aristocracy. That's those those best citizens, according to the the order of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai and the pleasure of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. Lord willing, we're part of that number. And that's that's why there's a difference, right? The feeble, uh, the ones that will be called least in the kingdom, the, the feeble. Even when you go into Isaiah, the 60th chapter, I believe it says a small one shall be a great nation. All right. Meaning a, a normal Israelite is going to have so many children. It's going to be like a small nation unto himself. How much more so the great ones? And that's the same. That's a similar comparison of what's happening now when it says, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David and the house of David shall be as God. That goes into that aristocracy that's being raised up in these last days, beginning with the apostles and elders on down. Lord willing, we endure until the end. That's what's being raised up in these last days. That's what Yahweh Shema Shah is calling for in these last days. And you're being developed and going through a process of refinement. All right. Just like when you deal with uh, the Dark Ages, during the middle of uh, mid medieval times in the Dark Ages, a king, when he had a son, he would take his, his son would go through rigorous tutel uh, tutelage. A perfect example of that being documented in history is um, Alexander the Great, which was the son of Philip II, being tutored uh, by, I believe it was either Aristotle or Plato. I'm, I'm not sure which one. But he was being personally tutored by one of the um, at that time, he was a renowned uh, teacher of wisdom. That's what the Lord is doing with us, with the greatest gift, which is wisdom. All right. It says wisdom will take us by crooked plays, uh, places. All right. The first de uh, desire of wisdom is the desire of discipline. And we're being tutored right now to be prepared for a position that the Lord is currently moving out our enemies to place us in. All right. Now, let's as a matter of fact, let's go to Galatians. All right. This is Galatians chapter four and verse one. And it reads, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. And that's what's happening through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai until the time appointed of the father. We are being tutored. Under the tutelage of wisdom, the furnace of affliction, all of these things through the spirit and power of the Abba Shemel Shai are preparing us for the next stage, the next phase. All right. The scriptures talk about us going from glory to glory. These experiences, us being chastised, 
All right, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem El Shaddai, it's for a purpose and a reason, and it's also for a season because eventually the the this uh, mortal must put on the immortal. And Lord willing, we're a part of that number. That's what's being prepared, that aristocracy. All right. So I, I don't want to be too long winded with this one through the spirit. I just want to go into that uh, to Lord willing, uh, do a little boost for the uh, for the day, a little exhortation for today. You know, through the spirit and power, you have by Shemel Shai, whatever you're going through, just realize and understand the Lord's preparing you for a greater position in life. All right. As a matter of fact, let me grab this and I'll end it on this. Right. This is Matthew chapter 25, and I'll start at verse 23. His Lord said unto him, and Lord willing, the Lord will be able to say that to us one day. The Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. All right. And first and foremost, learning how to rule our own spirit. And then secondly, all right, being a laborer and making yourself a living sacrifice. All right. Whether it be in word or in deed through the spirit and poverty, how by Shemel Shai, as the Lord prepares us and betters us in understanding and discernment and judgment. All right. So Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I want to give all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. The bonds to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.